This is Flash the Anti Gamer, and my time around out on the last episode, so sorry that you didn't see it, I guess. I mean, sorry that that it stopped abruptly. I just want to go over and talk to some people. Let's start with this person. More questions? Yep. Would you like to see the letter that Laurie gave me as a reward for finding her? The one in which Jake Hurley supposedly tells his niece how to find his lost mine? No, thank you. I happily leave it to you to try to solve the mystery of his disappearance. You can afford to look foolish, dear. I can't. Do you have a theory as to who pulled the emergency brake? Well, I know it wasn't me. I assume it wasn't you, and I highly doubt it was Lori. So that leaves those two friends of yours, Mr. Gray and Mr. Balducci. What about the other two friends? Joe, Joe and Frank Cardi. Mm -hmm. What do you think their motive was? I don't know about your friends, but perhaps those other two simply thought it would be fun. Boys will be boys. <laughs> Were you able to find the name of Jake's train engineer? I came across three references to the fact that Jake had an engineer, but I'm afraid none of them included his name. I failed. Sorry. Aren't you even going to try finding out what happened to Jake Hurley? No time. The only reason I haven't insisted that Lori release me from all the silliness is there's always the possibility that what happened to him has the makings of a bestseller. Although I highly doubt it. Why are you so sure that Jake's story wouldn't make a bestseller? His story is an all-too-common one. A man wanders off into the desert in search of gold and never returns. Why? He either doesn't have enough food or water, or he encounters hostile natives. What about his wife, Camille, dying on the train like that? That does make the story a little more interesting. She probably died of something mundane, like pneumonia or even measles. Now, if it was wintertime when she died, and they were in the mountains, Jake no doubt kept her body on the train for months before he buried her, which is rather delicious in a morbid sort of way. How do you think Jake's engineer wound up dead on the train in the middle of nowhere? My guess is the engineer got tired of waiting for Jake to return, took off in the train to get help, and died of a heart attack along the way. After which, the train rolled to a stop in Blue Moon Canyon. Anyone experienced enough to single-handedly run a steam engine would have been quite a bit older than Jake. I'll let you get back to your writing. Let me know if you run across anything juicy. Mm -hmm. And next, we're going to pay a visit to the Hardy Boys. Nancy, you missed it. Missed oh. what? The argument of the century. Joe, he's exaggerating. Aw, oh, come on, you heard him. They were ready to tear each other to shreds. Who? Charlena and Lori. All we heard was the tail end of it, and unfortunately, we really couldn't make out what they were saying. So, you don't know what they were arguing about? No. But whatever it was, both of them were absolutely out of their minds, livid. And it would probably be a good idea to find out why. Let me look into yep. it. I'll talk to you later, okay? You know where to find us. I sure do. Okay, so, back to this lady. This lady. More questions? Just one more. What were you and Lori arguing about earlier today? Lori and I? We weren't arguing. We were simply discussing a topic about which both of us are passionate, that's all. Were you discussing her wanting to be a romance novelist? Mm. No. And even if we were, that's really none of your business. I know that sounds harsh, but really, Nancy, eavesdropping is so tacky. Actually, it was Frank and Joe Hardy who overheard you. They said I should talk to you before they gave me all the gory details, but since you obviously don't want to tell me your side of the story, I'll just have to get the scoop from them. No, no, you don't have to do that. Hm. A storyline that Lori submitted to me found its way into my last book, despite the fact that she never received compensation for it. She's reading the book now, and when she got to that part, she freaked. You stole one of her ideas? She had no business sending me unsolicited material. But, technically, yes. Now, legally, she can't prove anything, and I'm certainly not about to admit anything. Just... And it's not as if she needs the money. But that's what we were arguing about. For what it's worth, I'm going to talk to this producer I know to see if he'll cast Lori in his next movie. It'll help ease my conscience, and who knows? She could wind up being a star. 
I mean, she is blonde. Well, I'll let you go. That would be nice. Yep, very nice. Uh, let's talk to Larry. Gerard. Or at least get to her cabinet. Once we go through all the other cabinets. And those are a lot of cabinets. Like five or something and all? Like. Just wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, there are two more after this. Yay. There she is. Yes? Or maybe not. We'll talk some more later. As soon as you figure it out, let me know. Yeah, sure. I will totally let you know. Enough time to call Bess. Hello? Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? Lori invited us on this train trip in hopes that someone will find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died. And he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? No, but I can tell you one thing. There's more to the people on board this train than meets the eye, including Lori. What makes you say that? Uh, just a feeling I get. Ow! Bess, watch it! Oops. Sorry. What <laughs> happened? She just got paint all over my face. I didn't mean to. Trust me, nobody on that train could possibly be any more dangerous than Bess with a loaded <laughs> paintbrush in her hand. Ha ha. Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently, Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Yep. Ew, creepy. I saw these strange lights outside the train. The same lights Jake used to see. Only he said it was Camille's ghost dancing beside the train. Super creepy. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. Which is hard when you're practically covered in paint. <laughs> and next... Charlena and Lori had this big, huge argument, and you'll never guess why. Uh, Lori called Charlena a hack. No. Uh, Charlena called Lori an airhead. No. Um, Beth, she doesn't really want you to guess, okay? Tell us, Nan. Well, it seems that Lori sent Charlena a bunch of story ideas, one of which Charlena used in her latest book without telling or paying Lori. Charlena stole something Lori wrote? That's incredible. No, the fact that Lori wrote something that Charlena thought was worth stealing. That's what's incredible. It makes me think that Lori may not be quite as dumb as she looks. Yeah, better keep an eye on her, Nan. Okay. If I told you that I needed a hint, what would you say? I'd say it's about time. I'd say fire away. <laughs> um... Okay. How do I get that compartment on the stove open? I could use some advice. Take a real good look at the numbers and icons on that sampler in Camille's car, paying particular attention to which number goes with what icon. Then remember what you saw, head for the scale in Jake's car, and see if you've got enough coins to weigh in on the solution. All right, thanks for the tip. No biggie, take care. You too, bye. See ya, and see ya all later. This is Frazzy Anti-Gamer, over and out.